So uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I deliberately put some post-its notes there because anybody who knows my lovely wife Wendy, we have these all over the house. Sometimes I think I'm going to wake up in the morning and they're going to be on my forehead <laughs> or anything like this. Teachers never switch off. They're 24-7, seven days a week. Pray for my children. Um, but I wanted to, to, to give you a simple message today. Three points, three verses. And keep in mind what we just heard from the supremacy of Christ. First point is, remember who you were. Second point, remember who Christ is. And the third point is, remember who you are. What is your identity? Point number one, remember who you were. So we're going to go verse, each point, verse 21, verse 22, verse 23. I've been a numbers person, I love how this comes together. But Colossians 1.21 reads, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. Remember who you were. We were alienated from God. Paul is reminding us who are now in Christ, that formerly we were alienated from God, but now we are called friends. The reference there is Luke 12, chapter 12, verse 4. You'll see all the references at the bottom of the screen. We were alienated, we were enemies, now we are friends. But it is very important that we see the transformation that God brings within our lives. Remember how much God has changed you. This is, I think, in many ways, the whole message of communion is remember what Christ has done. Remember, God is constantly going throughout the Old Testament, remember what I've done. He talks about the Exodus, he talks about all that he has done because we easily forget. We need to remember from where we have come. Sin separated us from God. So the reference says Isaiah 59, verse 1 to 2. But in Ephesians, verse 12 to verse 13, we hear also by the Apostle Paul, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Do you remember who you were before you were in Christ? I look back and I'm ashamed of the man that I was. I lived for myself I did, had no belief in God whatsoever. I didn't acknowledge him. I went my own way. I, I try and tell my wife sometimes that you know, I was led astray. I was an innocent bystander. <laughs> but if I'm honest, I wasn't led astray. I knew exactly what I was doing. I, I was drank far too much. I was doing drugs all the time at the weekends, sometimes through the week. I was in illicit relationships, and they never worked. I was never content. I was looking for something I didn't know where it was. There was a hole within me that was not getting filled. It was not getting filled by relationships. It was not getting filled by work. It was not getting filled by contentment where I lived. Only God was going to bring that fulfillment in me. And this is why I've got a darkened picture here from this is from San Francisco, but it reminds me of where I was. I remember vividly as a young man, well, not so young man in Christ, walking up Lovian Road one night on a Friday. We'd had some church meeting, and I was full of, you know, God and understanding, and, and, and I suddenly, it was like all the lights had come on, on. All the people were out partying, and that was me. That was totally me, who I was. And now I thought, God's grace is amazing, because I don't deserve this. 
This is nothing I have done. It's all that God has done. And sometimes in my sin, I, I belittle what I was like. I think, you know, well, have a laugh and I did this and that. But I'm ashamed of who I was. It's, it, it's, it's humbling to me to know that God has transformed me, that he has a plan for all those who would come to him and have their hope in him. Because we were in darkness. Do not forget your former life. Do not forget where you have come from. Just remember, but remember how you've been transformed. Speak to people who know you. When I, I get with, with young people, I've got with Ewan on Friday and, and, uh, and uh, my young man who's just getting engaged, Kieran. But when I get with these young men who want to know God, and I'm just like, I'm amazed by them because I was so far from that. I was nowhere near. God had to bring me so far down so that I would look up and somehow he would acknowledge me and find me. But remember who you were. Never forget that, that Christ, if you are in Christ, you have been changed immensely. You have the provision to change from a single cell to a grown adult. That transformation is possible through Christ in you. But you should never forget where you came from. Second point. Remember who Christ is. Hopefully you were, as I certainly was, reading the, the hymn to Christ is from verse 15 to verse 20. I minimize who Jesus is all the time. I was reading that going, I, I need to think about this more. Who's our Lord? I mean, they, he was around before creation. He was with God and the Spirit as when it hovered through the earth. He is the head of the church. Amen. Don't look to man, don't look to me, certainly, but don't look to anybody who steps before you because we're sinners. Yeah. We've been redeemed like you. Yeah. But, but Christ is perfect. Yeah. Go to him first. Yeah. Verse 22 says, But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you wholly in his sight without blemish, and free from accusation. We were alienated from God, but we have been reconciled through Christ's body, and now we appear holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Wow, that is amazing. I love this image of the, the angels in heaven who appear white as snow when Christ is, is literally, I think the translation is, he's literally dripping in blood. But we, because of what he has done, appear white. We have been forgiven by Jesus. We couldn't save ourselves, so Jesus became the sacrifice for our sins. The purpose of the death of Jesus was to present us holy blameless and without reproach before God. Again, if you go through the, the Old Testament, nobody could appear before God. Even Moses couldn't see God's face. The curtain and the wall were there, but when Christ was resurrected, the curtain was torn in two. We could have a relationship with God through Jesus. He's the ultimate intermediary for us. Yet, we can still feel guilty. Yeah. Do you, I, feel, I, I, I think I have a guilt complex or a guilt obsession. I was, I was a kid at school who would, the, the, I can visually remember this, and we'd stand up, some, something had happened untoward in our class, and they wanted to find the perpetrator. So they'd all say, right, we're not leaving this room until somebody's admitted to this. And I'd be sitting there, nothing to do with it, feeling totally guilty. And condemned. It makes no sense. Yeah. But don't we all feel that guilt? Yeah. But consider this. 
we have to learn to forgive ourselves in the same way that Christ has forgiven us. And I really pray that you invest in, in, in the, those who are going to take it, the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality course, because this is a way of examining who we really are in Christ and who we can be, warts and all, that we may become the, the men and women of God and whoever he wants to transform us to be. So we can learn to forgive ourselves in the way Christ has forgiven, but more importantly, we need to remember who Christ is and what he has done for us. And finally, third point is remember who you are. I'll explain this picture in a moment. Remember who you are. Colossians 1 verse 23 and it very importantly, it starts off the, with the word, the small word, if. It says, if you continue in your faith, established and firm, now do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is a gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. This statement begins with this word, if. The Bible does not teach one saved once saved, always saved. This is not what the word says to us. So what, are we, what is Paul trying to tell us here? Our faith must be established and firm and not moved. Our faith is something that needs to be worked at. The troubles of this life will come at you. I promise you that. And when they come, when the storm comes, our faith needs to be firm. So the metaphor that Paul is using here is for a solid building with a firm foundation. Edinburgh seems to be a city of mass construction yeah. <laughs> and roadworks. Yeah, okay. And I, I got to see Ben the other week in lovely Burnt Island in Fife, and I thought it was so nice to be free from all that. <laughs> Actually, things that run to schedule and, and stuff. But, but one of our, our many bus routes is we go past Haymarket Station. Maybe some of you have seen this. And, but for weeks and weeks and weeks, it felt like nothing was happening. And then suddenly, eventually, you see these buildings emerge from the stone and the rock. Because the foundations have to be really strong. All that time and effort has to be put in before the buildings can stand and withstand the storms. This is what Paul is referring to. Our faith needs to be firm. It needs to be strong. It must be something that is worked on. So who you are is a question of identity. And our identity has to be in Jesus Christ, not in what we do. I'll say that again. Who you are is a question of identity, and identity has to be in Jesus Christ, not in what we do. Yeah. In some ways, maybe this point should be whose you are. Paul closes by mentioning that he is a servant of the gospel. Paul was grateful to be even connected we're spreading the gospel throughout the world. But this, is our, this, is, this word servant is connected, I think, to identity. And I just want, I've written down, some of you heard this expression, a fourth question for you today to take away with you. Do you consider yourself to be a servant of Christ? Because if he's the ultimate authority in your life, are you willing to serve him? And there is many, many ways to serve him. This is what Christ uh, showed when he knelt down at his disciples when they were arguing who was the greatest and washed their feet with a towel to show them the attitude that he had that we in turn must have. That comes from humbling ourselves and realizing who is really Lord. It's all about remembering. Remember who you were. 
Remember who Christ is and remembering who you are. I hope this has helped today. And uh, thank you just for hearing and let God's words dig deep into your heart.